I'm Congresswoman Anna Eshoo, and I'd like to talk with you about my campaign for re-election. First, I hope you and your family are well and safe. Through the COVID-19 virus and economic hardships, through racial reckoning and the movement to reform policing, through the decline and near wrecking of the U.S. Postal Service, and now the fires that have ravaged our coastal communities, through it all, I've drawn on my knowledge of the policies, resources, and experts within the federal government to alleviate suffering and economic insecurity, to provide relief and support, and to find solutions. I'm determined that we will recover stronger and smarter. We're not there yet, but we'll get there. As chair of the House Subcommittee on Health, I sounded the alarm on the virus last January and held one of the first hearings to call the administration to account. I've written laws and overseen the development of policies that will lower prescription drug prices, eliminate surprise billing, and address maternal health and infant mortality. Over the years, I've had more than 45 bills signed into law by four presidents of both political parties. Together, you and I have championed net neutrality and privacy. I'm proud of our environmental track record protecting open space and wetlands. To learn more about my work and those who stand with me, go to AnnaEshuForCongress.com. I'm Anna Eshu, and I'd be honored to have your vote in the upcoming election. I'm Congresswoman Anna Eshu, candidate for Congress, and I approve this message. As a third generation Santa Cruz County resident, I want our county to be a place where youth, singles, families, and seniors all thrive. As the founder of Civonomics, my company worked with city and county governments for over a decade to respond directly to voters' concerns. I graduated from Stanford and have served on the board of directors for my own business, as well as that of Digital Nest and the city of Santa Cruz's downtown commission. I know that doing things differently starts by working with you, the voter. I will rebuild county services based on your needs, learn from you to improve them, and invest your money wisely. Today our county is stuck. We continue to study a $1.3 billion train that we can't afford. Our county roads score an F. We received $10.5 million from the state in 2019 to relieve homelessness but didn't build a single home. And two grand jury reports on fire safety and preparedness blast the county's leadership for failure to understand the urgency and seriousness of the problem and act accordingly. These are the types of bad decisions and so-called experience we don't need going forward. It's time for a new approach. Helping our county recover from the pandemic and making progress on Black Lives Matter require new thinking. I have proposed new ideas for housing, homelessness, transportation, fire safety, and the environment, which draw on best practices nationwide. You can read about them at my website, manukoenig.com. I'd be honored to serve as your voice for change in creating a better Santa Cruz County for all. Hello, my name is Shebra Kalantari Johnson. I'm a mom and a wife, an immigrant and neighbor, a small business owner and social change leader, and I'm running for Santa Cruz City Council. Our community has been living in crisis in recent weeks and months. My thoughts go out to everyone who's been impacted and my gratitude to everyone who's stepped up and helped. It's during these times of crisis that we can come together and rebuild a stronger future. We've done this before and we can do it again. When my parents left Iran after the revolution, they sought a better life for our family. The promise of America, the opportunity to work hard and provide for your family, and to live in a diverse and inclusive community. This is what they came here for, and this is what I want for our community. Today, like many of you, I'm concerned about the unprecedented challenges we face. Our health, economy, and social fabric are experiencing significant stress and uncertainty. The path to recovery will not be quick or easy. But we're in this together, and together we can find solutions to bring about positive change in the town that we love. 
My response is to serve Santa Cruz as a member of our city council, to serve through partnership and lead with a pragmatic mind and a compassionate heart. I've dedicated my life and career to generating solutions to address our community's many challenges, supporting youth through early care and education, youth substance use prevention, and homelessness, working on local city and county policies, securing over $30 million for Santa Cruz to fund issues that range from immigration rights to criminal justice reform. As your city council member, I commit to economic recovery, affordable housing, community wellness, and social equity. While I don't propose simple solutions to our city's challenging problems, I know that together we can unite, activate, and uplift our community to build a resilient, inclusive, and diverse Santa Cruz for all. My name is Shebra Kalantari Johnson, and I would be honored to have your vote. Hi, my name is Martine Watkins. I am a current city council member, former mayor for the Santa Cruz City Council, and I'm running for re-election. I've also worked at the County Office of Education for over 15 years, supporting programs from cradle to career. Santa Cruz is my hometown, and my husband and I are really fortunate to be raising our two young daughters here as well. In our community, our future generations are really depending on our ability to work together in order to produce lasting results. And Santa Cruz knows how to come together when faced with adversity, and I remember that from the 1989 earthquake. But we can only do that if we have leaders who are experienced and focused on working with you, the community, our local businesses, education, nonprofit, and others to really understand and co-create the solutions for the needs ahead. And through this inclusive community engagement, I really feel my track record supports that I have the experience to get things done. So I will continue to do whatever is in my power to interrupt systemic inequities. I will support families in accessing childcare. I pledge to be an advocate as I have been for climate adaptation through solar panels and power, clean energy, and investing in low-income communities. As the 2019 Santa Cruz Chamber Woman of the Year, I will support our business recovery from COVID-19 in the recent crises and create a green economy with well-paying jobs. As a member of the Housing Blueprint Subcommittee, we gather community input to pr preserve and create more affordable housing, and I will continue to use that blueprint as a foundation to our housing solutions. The outcome of this election must affirm our commitment to responsive leadership, and together we can overcome our current crisis while rebuilding for a greener future. My commitment is evidenced by this past four years I've been able to serve you on the Santa Cruz City Council. And for more information about me, please visit my website at www.martinewatkins.com. And if you're on social media, you can follow us on Facebook at Martine Watkins for Santa Cruz City Council or on Instagram as well. Thank you so much for your vote. Greetings from a West Cliff sunset. My name is Elizabeth Conlon, and I'm a scientific researcher at Driscoll's in Watsonville. I am running for city council because I love living here and I want to help us confront big but solvable problems. I love many of the same things about Santa Cruz as I'm sure you do. The opportunities for outdoor recreation, the numerous options for live music, and the level of political engagement reflecting how deeply we care about the place we call home. Every time I ride my bike from the UCSC campus down to the ocean, I think about how lucky I am to live here. Now, I'm running for city council because I want to address the dueling crises of housing and the pandemic, which I see as the most urgent issues facing the city of Santa Cruz. As a renter of a studio on the east side, I know firsthand the affordability crisis facing renters of all income levels. And the lack of affordable housing has severe implications for equity and opportunity in our city. The long brewing affordability crisis has collided with the pandemic to bring us to our current breaking point and we can't afford to wait any longer. Santa Cruz isn't and shouldn't become just another rich beach town. I envision a more vibrant and inclusive Santa Cruz through new housing for all income levels, an outreach focused approach to homelessness, and a community led recovery that uplifts those in need and leads the way as a model sustainable city. I'm not focused on labels or on insisting that my ideas are the only way to tackle our problems. But I believe 
that we can make our city better through uniting around what we do agree on. Learn more and tell me what you're passionate about at conlinforcouncil.com. Hi, this is Kelsey Hill, one of the progressive candidates for Santa Cruz City Council. As you know, our community is navigating crisis after crisis. And because of that, this local election is more critical than ever. Our Santa Cruz community needs leaders who will step up in this time of crisis and stand up for our residents and their interests in the challenging decisions ahead. I'm a nonprofit media specialist and intern director at the Romero Institute, as well as a progressive organizer around housing justice and climate solutions. I'm running this year because I love Santa Cruz and I wanna make sure that we uphold our values and that we protect a community that serves everyone, not just those with wealth and access. I'm running on a platform that centers the four following tenants. We need an equitable COVID-19 recovery, one that protects vulnerable community members and small businesses. We need to build affordable housing, truly affordable housing that's accessible to low income and very low income levels. We need to reinvest in systems of safety that properly address issues of houselessness, mental health crises, and substance misuse from a place that prioritizes compassion and care over incarceration and citation. And lastly, we need to ramp up our climate solutions and build resilience where it counts, because as you know, we are literally choking on the smoke of inaction. And I don't know about you, but I can see that the status quo isn't working for so many people in our community. The time is now to stand up, and I'd be honored to have your vote on November 3rd, because I will be a leader who listens to our community and does the right thing. If you'd like to learn more about me or my platform, please go to kelseyhillforcouncil.com and you can also endorse, sign up to volunteer or contribute. Thank you and be well. Hi, I'm Kayla Kumar and I'm running for Santa Cruz City Council in the upcoming November 2020 election. I'm running because we've been brought to a turning point by a series of crises and from here we have very big decisions to make about who we are, about what matters most to us, about where we want to go from here. And I think that decision belongs to you. I think it belongs to those of us who have invested our lives here, who live and work here, who have grown our families, our businesses, our careers, who have our hearts here in Santa Cruz. And I'm running because I think we need local leadership that always comes from that place when we're making decisions. And out here on the campaign trail, I've learned a lot from Santa Cruz and the people here, the vision that we hold for an equitable COVID-19 recovery, for public safety that is life affirming and anti-racist and creates safety for all, for affordable housing that's real, actual affordable housing that can be accessed by those of us in the lower income levels, and for bold environmental justice for the protection of our green and blue spaces and for infrastructure that allows people to get around in a greener way. So this is the vision I've heard from the people of Santa Cruz and I will never stop working to make your vision the new better reality, the new better normal here in Santa Cruz. So I'd be honored to earn your vote. I would be honored to rise to this moment alongside you. You can learn more about the campaign at www.kumarforcouncil.com. Thank you. My name is Maria Cadenas. I'm a proud resident of the city of Santa Cruz, a mom, a renter, an immigrant. And today I'd like to make my announcement as a candidate for Santa Cruz City Council. Most recently, I launched on DocuFund Monterey Bay, which was an effort to address the fact that due to the pandemic, many and the most harmed in our community will be undocumented workers. These are our neighbors who have lived here for 20 years. It is time for us to have deep conversations or what being a good neighbor is, and that includes housing. As a city and as a region, our people need to be able to live and have a room of their own. We need to look at affordable housing. We look at, need to look at cross income, but most importantly, we need to be willing to accept the fact that it will change our communities in order to provide housing and a roof for every single one of the people already living here. Neighbors who are currently overcrowded in single family homes deserve better and I think we can do better. I'm running to provide a Santa Cruz for all because I know we can do better. I know that the future that we hold is available to all of us. I'd like to say that everything begins with love. 
As silly as it may sound, it begins there. We must connect to each other as people, as people and as neighbors, and start from there. The policies ahead have difficult conversations, but they are doable and they're manageable and we can get it done. This is a critical moment in time where we have to look at how we are investing to ensure that our budgets reflect our values. This is hard because comfort and habit are hard to break, but we have to do it. Just because we've done it so long for this way doesn't mean it's the right way. Let's refocus on our values, analyze our budgets, and make sure that they reflect the communities that we want to be. Hi, I'm Sandy Brown, and I'm running for re-election to the Santa Cruz City Council. I'm running because I believe local government should reflect our community values. For me, that means supporting policies and programs aimed at maintaining it and improving our parks and open spaces, tackling the climate crisis by building out bike and pedestrian infrastructure, and planning for sea level rise and other disruptions which disproportionately affect low-income people and neighborhoods. Increasing the number of affordable units to be built in new developments and dedicating city property for affordable housing. Providing support and protections for renters and small business tenants struggling due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Supporting workers' rights and living wage job creation. And critical supportive services for those who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. My approach to public service is motivated by my lifelong commitment to advancing the goals of economic democracy, sustainability, and social justice. It is also informed by principles of good governance. I believe that people should have a voice in deciding how the city runs and that we must find ways to meaningfully involve the public in decision-making processes. In talking with people across the city, I've learned that many do not feel like their voices are being heard, and I wanna be a part of changing that. As we navigate the challenging road of the dual public health and economic crises brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, our public servants must provide collaborative and participatory leadership. Now is the time to meaningfully engage with the pu public about recovery and rebuilding. To learn more about me and my campaign, please visit www.sandybrownforcitycouncil.com. My 2016 campaign motto was a Santa Cruz for all of us. And it is in that spirit that I ask for your vote this year. Thank you. I'm Donna Lind, a Scotts Valley City Council member, having served two terms as mayor. And I'm running for re-election. In August, I celebrated 52 years working for the city of Scotts Valley. I started as a young high school student at City Hall, taking the minutes for city council meetings. I moved one year later to the police department and worked to become the first female Scottsdale police officer, later a sergeant. I am proud to have served with Scottsdale Police Department for a total of 40 years when I was elected to city council 12 years ago. All of my adult life has been serving Scotts Valley. This is my home. The city of Scotts Valley had been working hard towards recovery from a fiscal crisis when COVID-19 hit. The effects of COVID have been devastating to our community as it has to our neighbors. We've been working to support local business in every way possible. And then the CCU lightning fire struck, causing even more devastation. While serving on city council, I have served with various commissions, including senior advocacy, Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency, Criminal Justice Council, Metro, Traffic Safety, LAVCO, and others. With my history with Scotts Valley and having served with the Scotts Valley Chamber of Commerce for the past 15 years, named Woman of the Year, serving as president of Fallen Officer Foundation, I bring relationships, critical knowledge, and experience valuable in working towards recovery. I have a proven record of service. I am known to be very hardworking, and I'm committed to our community, and I'm ready to continue the work when reelected to Scotts Valley City Council. Thank you. Greetings. My name is Jack Dillis, and I'm running for re-election to the Scotts Valley City Council. You know, we live in trying times with COVID-19 and fires everywhere, and our community is suffering as a result. I hope you and your loved ones are doing okay. In these tumultuous days, we need a steady hand to address the difficulties we are encountering. As a current council member, past mayor, and active community member, 
I understand the challenges facing Scotts Valley. As former finance director for three cities, I know that Scotts Valley must manage taxpayer dollars wisely. I bring a robust financial skill set to the city. As a former president of the Santa Cruz County Board of Education, I know that we must support our diverse students in Scotts Valley and throughout our county. I will continue to work to protect our environment and our quality of life for all as a member of regional committees focused on clean energy, clean air, sustainable groundwater, and recycling. As a member of the Seniors Advisory Council, I will watch out for seniors. On the Affordable Housing Subcommittee, my focus is to balance the need to maintain Scotts Valley's small town feel with some new housing by encouraging accessory dwelling units and by expanding the area in which new housing projects must build 15% of units as affordable. I will focus on mitigating community impacts from development. I will also prioritize public safety for all, economic development, and assisting our most vulnerable residents. I am proud that we recently opened up Glenwood Preserve for hiking, biking, equestrian use, and dog walking. I will work for more recreational facilities. I ask for your vote in these challenging times so that we can plan together for a bright future. Please visit Dillis2020.com. Dear community, now more than ever, we need experienced leadership to ensure our kids get the education they deserve. I currently serve on the school board as the only Latina and I'm running for re-election. Please consider the following as you keep our children's best interests at heart. I'm a product of Watsonville, raised by a hardworking family, attended PVUSD schools and graduated from Santa Clara University. I'm a parent in PVUSD. My husband and I are raising our three children in our community. I'm deeply dedicated to Watsonville. I have served on numerous boards and commissions, such as the Paro Valley Education Foundation, the Community Action Board, and the Watsonville Parks and Recreation Commission. I get things done. A few examples of my leadership include class size reduction, anti-bullying campaign and curriculum, increases to teachers and staff salaries, improved academic performance, reinstating visual and performing arts in our schools, climate change action, and data-driven initiatives focus on the whole child. I am a proponent of transparency, accountability, and inclusive decision-making. Together, we have the opportunity to continue to advance academic achievement, increase parent involvement and mental health services, improve special education outcomes, and retain and attract the best to work for our district. My sole purpose is to help our students graduate with 21st century skills and thrive in college and career to become successful professionals and productive members of our community. What counts the most in this race is that one has direct and personal experience in this community, a firm dedication to the students and family served, and a proven commitment to real solutions. I am the candidate with these qualities. I would be honored to earn your vote. Thank you. My name is Steve Trujillo. I am running for the Cabrillo College Board of Trustees in District 7. What's interesting about District 7 is it covers a good portion of northern Monterey County and a good portion of southern Santa Cruz County. 15,500 voters in all. I have lived in both counties, including uh, Salinas and Monterey, up until 1998 and then in 1998 I moved to Santa Cruz County so I'm very familiar with life in both counties. The reason I'm running is because community colleges are in crisis. Three out of every five community college students doesn't have a bed they can call their own, doesn't have enough food and doesn't even have medical insurance. Therefore I am suggesting that Cabrillo College needs to establish an Office of Ombudsman to help any and all, both students and employees, make sure that these three basic needs are met. Currently there is no such office. In addition to that, we must not go to the homeowner every four or five years to ask them to come up with another hundred dollars per year on their property taxes to fund Cabrillo. It's not fair. I support Proposition 15, which would eliminate that issue by allowing commercial firms that make more than $4 million a year in profit to have their property at market value 
rather than the value that they purchased it at. That's only fair. Now, I'm hoping I'll have your vote. I am Steve Trujillo, candidate for Cabrillo College Board of Trustees. Vote November 3rd, Trujillo for Cabrillo.